All right, Matt Martin here again from Smooth River Guiding. Um, I'm gonna go over one of my favorite spring pike flies. In fact, pike fly any time of the year, called the yard sail. This fly can search fish, you can sight fish with them. The fish are gonna hunt it down and kill it. Throw a couple of these in your fly box. All right, so one of the uh, best searching pike flies I have come across in the last few years uh, is a fly called the yard sail. Um, it's a, a very effective, um, <clears throat> like a cutting fly, like a walking the dog style fly. Uh, it gets the name because when you strip it, it goes left, right, up, down. You have no idea. Hence the name, you know. In ski culture, you have a fall, it's called a yard sale. So same idea. Uh, it's uh, very unpredictable, um, but uh, it, it drives pike and, uh, and, and, and if tied in the correct sizes, uh, musky and uh, big bass crazy, um, just by downsizing a little bit for bass. We're gonna start out with a four-aught trout predator hook. Um, it is uh, gonna have a, a nice strong uh, shank, but still relatively thin wire, so it's gonna find, it find I find it easy to penetrate the fish's mouth. Uh, pike and muskie have quite bony mouths, so it's strong, but it's gonna find its mark quickly. Um, it's tied weightless. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll be incorporating even foam in this one to make it somewhat of a, a buoyant fly um, to allow it uh, to have its hunting side-to-side -side action. So <clears throat> we're gonna start off with, uh, again, with is some uh, the Vivas Power Thread 70 denier. Um, we're gonna start up towards the eye. Doesn't really matter because we can, we're gonna work our way up there anyways. Just quick wraps to the back of the hook, just beyond the hook point. <clears throat> For the uh, tail, we're going to start off with some bucktail. Uh, we're going to tie this one in like a smallmouth bass kind of color pattern, uh, a major uh, food source for a lot of predatory fish, especially in river systems where the smallies like to live. Um, so for musky or pike in the rivers, this is a good one to start with. Um, we're going to use brown bucktail. I'm just going to get a pretty decent chunk. Nothing too crazy. Um, just enough to stop the tail hackles from wrapping around the hook point. Maybe a little bit more than what you would grab for, let's say, a clouser minnow. <clears throat> or maybe exactly the same amount. Um, cool, so it's gonna be short, but this is again just acting as a bit of a, almost like a, a guard to keep the hackles in place. pretty much perfect. So this fly utilizes um, you know, schlappen, neck hackle, American rooster saddle is the regular, uh, is, the called, is the called for material in the pattern. But I'm gonna use some schlappen uh, today in brown uh, and we're gonna make sure when we put these uh, hackles on, they are gonna be uh, kind of on a side profile to create a nice flat surface, uh, which will give you that action that we're looking for. We're not looking to tie this fly extremely long. Something in the six to seven inch range is kind of ideal. I find that will allow, um, it still interests the big pike for sure. Um, it will be small enough for the less than average or the, the average size pike to eat um, as well. So you're not like missing out on fish. build up the right shape. Okay. Perfect. And you can trump in some fibers here, some fluffy fibers, helps give the right profile to the fly. That's going to be perfect length, about six inch. Um, we're going to add in some flash now. Just going to use some gold flashaboo. Um, Pretty shy with it. Uh, this does utilize quite a bit of flash on the tail, and then a little again on the 
cheeks or the fins, so make sure you save enough for yourself because I'm running low. There we go. I'm going to run that right over the top of the hackles, so it runs on the inside. And put that in. Then I'm going to take the butt ends and just fold that over. Perfect. <clears throat> so what we're going to start with now is building up the body. And the body is built from a mix of, in this case, uh, EP fiber and two millimeter craft foam. Um, so we're going to use some tan EP, which is a good small mouth color, browns, tans, olives, you know, kind of match it to your local river. And you're going to take off a pretty good amount, like thickness, maybe, yeah, something like that. Square it off. And you're going to tie in a section about an inch, inch and a half. And then you're going to fold it back to double it up. And then you're just going to cut to match. And we're going to do this a bunch of times up the hook to create a profile. Basically, this fly will be very narrow but quite tall and allow for the walking action that we're looking for. And on the bottom, I go um, on one side of the hook point, and then on the other side of the hook point, and then again trim that to the same length. And we are definitely going to trim this EP after to get it to the right shape. I'm going to take our two millimeter craft foam. And what I'm going to cut are little almost egg shape, almost oval kind of discs out of this. And we're going to utilize three or four. I think this hook should utilize four. I'm just going to cut those right now. And this will allow the fly to suspend in the water after the strip. We're going to fish it on a sinking line or a, like a, maybe a sink tip to get the fly down a little bit. But when you pause it, that fly is going to hover in the fish's face. And in cold water, it is really all about the pause for these fish. It will often attack it when you least expect it. Ooh, quite a violent hit, which is why we all love pike fishing so much. You can use even any color you like. I think yellow actually looks good in this color, even though there's no yellow in the smallmouth, but it's a nice bit of contrast. Tie it in. All right, now we're going to tie in another chunk of EP and just keep stacking our way up. Square up the tips. And same as before. Tie it in. Fold it back. Tie it back in. You can also, if you wanted to upsize this, you can tie it as a double literally called the double yard sale. A little bit big for your average pike, but great size for a big pike or muskie. Some of my top producing colors besides bass have been, uh, <laughs> no surprise, uh, white and orange. <laughs> um, and then other like baitfish patterns, white and olive. Um, Fire tiger is also a good one orange and green and yellow, or chartreuse. And we're gonna go forward, and tie in another piece of foam. Great. And a 
little bit more EP. The front half of this whole fly is going to be synthetic. It sheds water really quick. Uh, casting it is a dream. It's really easy to cast. Um, compared to some other materials, it sheds water really easy. And a lot of the time I find with flies, uh, they don't have enough side to side action for predators. That's huge. Looking for something that is always hunting for center, I think is a term that we use. A fly looks like it's injured. Swimming off to the left, swimming off to the right, and inevitably going straight again. So think about that when you're tying predator flies. Add material that'll allow the fly to move without you having to utilize your rod tip, just on the strip. Getting there. <clears throat> I don't think we'll need another piece of foam. We'll just finish off with these tie-in, this tie-in of EP. One last section of EP on the bottom. It's not an incredibly quick tie, but it's not a long tie. The great thing about it is it's very durable. You can catch a lot of fish on each one of these. Even the hackle it surprisingly stands up incredibly well. So at this point, what I like to do is kind of pull the fibers up and down, kind of get an idea of their shape, lengths, all that, brush them up, brush them down. And it's reminiscent, almost, of like a sideways kind of merkin crab, <laughs> uh, somewhat. So the profile, instead of flat, is like this, like a fish. Uh, so if you're looking on this head on, it's extremely slim. And what we're going to do is just take our scissors and try to get all those scraggly pieces off there. And tune it, tune it up so it swims properly. Um, it's like a lot of swim bait style flies, like game changers and that. Um, you don't know how it's really going to swim until you swim it. So it's not a bad idea to pack a pair of scissors in your boat box to determine when you start fishing it. We're getting to the profile that I like. <clears throat> Perfect. So what we're going to use now is a couple different colors of ice dub to create the head. Um, it's just going to be tied in almost like sculpin wool. Uh, you're going to pull off big chunks. You're going to stack the fibers on the top and bottom. Um, for the head of this flower, we're going to start off with the uh, sculpin olive. It's a really nice brown, green, orange mix. It's not just a standard brown. And we're going to separate the fibers and we're going to restack them. Cl clump them back up, separate the fibers, and stack them back up. Now in this amount, a bunch, I think I have a little too much. So I'm going to pull it apart and utilize this for two. So there we go. It's better to tie in smaller bunches, I find, than one big one. So we're going to tie that in over the back and a clump. Back it up a little bit. There we go. Pull down. Pull that forward. For the belly, um, I like a contrasting color. You could go white. Uh, you could go kind of a rust like this one, the rusty bronze. It's a good color too. Looks really fishy. It's kind of more greeny gold with orange, but all complementary colors. And we're going to stack it on the bottom. 
new straps, pull tight, right the fly up, pull everything back. Come in front with a bunch of wraps just to secure them in that orientation. Come forward a little bit more and repeat. This should take usually three clumps on top and three on the bottom. One tip when you start tying flies like this and you <clears throat> start buying laser dub, probably buy two times as much white because <laughs> you often use white for the bellies and you run out of it first. <laughs> or whatever color you choose to use the belly on most of your flies, make sure you double up on that because it just you go through it so fast. Right, one last clump, and we're almost there. Oh, I should say, before I do the last clump, <laughs> caught myself, I wanna add flash on either side of the fly. Whether it's replicating fins or not, I don't know. But all I know is that it seems to make a bit of a difference about the length of the hook in front of the last clumping or second last clumping. Double that up. And then we're going to trim that to the same length. We'll do the same on my side. Perfect. And we're just about done. One thing I add to all my pike flies, and I carry extra, uh, is eyes. Um, they're the first thing to fall off your fly usually, uh, after a few good eats. I do think it gives the fish an actual target where they should attack. So. Do I think they're necessary? Not really, but <clears throat> for me it's a confidence booster. And I'm always going to have a spare pack of eyes in my fly box with a bottle of crazy glue. Just to zap them on midway through the day. Finish off there. <clears throat> I take a brown sharpie or any other permanent marker, and color up the back, pull out any of these loose fibers, they'll come right out easy. Even though you stack them, sometimes you get some loose things. Every smallie is darker on the back, so hit those EP fibers, make sure they're showing that they're brown. Be a good walleye imitation too, for northern lakes that might not have as many smallmouth. Like I said, any color really seems to work. Some better than others on certain days, but. And then the final thing is, I like to add some vertical barring. As most fish have some sort of striping. I find it's, you get a better result by like, Tapping the pen, digging it, and pulling the material tight when you're doing it. And something to draw against. Alright, and I 
this. I'll throw in a couple. So I like to part the material, try to get it towards the hook shank a little bit more. Gives you a nice flat surface to work with. Come on. Perfect. A decent amount. And anybody who's ever tied with how easy it is to stick your fingers to it. So I like to just drop it on, give it one press, and then leave it. Maybe a small adjustment. If you adjust it too much, you end up just, the, the eyes will never stick. So, and you end up hooking, gluing yourself. Besides that, I'll take my bodkin and usually apply a little bit of pressure right in the pupil. There we go. So, get all those loose bits out. That would be a single yard sail. That fly has a very fishy profile. Um, and uh, we'll catch you predator fish pretty much anywhere you go.